This question says solve the inequality, the absolute value of 4x plus 3 is greater than 7, take 2x. Questions similar to this involving absolute values have appeared in the sample papers, the specimen papers, the 2019 mock papers, and the 2019 official A-level exam papers. That doesn't guarantee a similar question will come up in the next set of exam papers, but at least it makes it a pretty good topic to revise. Now, other than solving inequalities or equations, they might also ask you to graph absolute values. So graph something like this, you know, the absolute value of 4x plus 3. And they might also ask you to solve an equation involving absolute values. So, you know, the absolute value of 4, 4x plus 3, I don't know, equals something like, um, what would it be? Negative 2x plus 1 or something. Or they might even ask you to uh, prove prove the absolute value of 4x plus 3 equals uh, 3x plus 2 has no solutions. Okay, and there are a few other examples which I just showed. So anyways, let's get on with this inequality first. So there are two possibilities here. You could have this uh, value in, in here, the 4x plus 3, you could have it being a positive value. So in that case, you would just have 4x plus 3 greater than 7 take 2x, or you could have some negative value. So you could, for example, if x was negative 1, you would get negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1, but you're taking the absolute value of that, so then it would be positive 1. So when we're removing those absolute value symbols, because that's what we have to do in order to find the values of x, we would say then that we would have some negative value on the left hand side here. So negative 4x plus 3 greater than 7 take 2x. So there's two possibilities you, you need to consider, the positive one and the negative one. Uh, and then you proceed from here. So this is the algebraic approach. You can also do it graphically, uh, but let's continue now. So here solve for x as you would normally with an inequality treat it as an equal sign, so add that 2x to the left hand side, 4x plus 2x is 6x, and then take that 3 from the right hand side, 7 take 3 is 4, and then divide by 6 on the right hand side, 4 over 6, you can simplify to 2 on 3. So in this case, x is greater than 2 on 3. Over here, we have this negative. To get rid of that negative, divide the right hand side by the negative and also remember to flip the inequality signs. Uh, whenever you have an inequality, if you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, you need to flip that inequality sign around. There's a number of ways of understanding why that's the case I won't go into here, uh, but just mess around with it if you like. So then we would get 4x plus 3 uh, less than 2x take 7, so that negative 2x become positive, that positive 7 has become a negative 7, and then solve for x again. So 4x take 2x is 2x, negative 7 take 3 is negative 10, and then x is less than negative 5. So here we have our solutions for x, uh, and if we were to use set notation, I believe it looks like this. So x is less than negative 5, or x is greater than two thirds. So they are the possible solutions. And you can check this. So what would not be a solution? Well, x equals zero because that's, you know, that's less than two thirds and greater than negative five. So zero should not work. So if we plugged in zero for x, we would get three on the left hand side and then seven on the right. And three is clearly not greater than seven. So that checks out then maybe we could check negative, uh, negative six or even, yeah, well, negative six because it has to be less than negative five. So what would we get there? We would get negative 24 plus three, that's negative 21. And then seven plus two times six is uh, what, 19. So 21 is greater than 19. Okay, that works. Then we could also try X equal to one. So that should work as well, four plus, 3 is 7, and then 7 take 2 is 5. So 7 is greater than 5. Okay, so that, uh, you know, fulfills those checks at least, so we can be fairly confident that's uh, correct. 
Okay, what about these types of questions? If we're asked to graph the absolute value of 4x plus 3, and you may or may not be given an, a set of axes for this, so you might have to draw your own set of axes, um, you know, plot them out, and you'll have to think of the scale to use. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and we're trying to graph the absolute value of 4x plus 3. Well, firstly, it's like a straight line graph in that this number will be the y-intercept. So draw your y scale. And we know it cuts the y-axis at positive 3. And then the gradient will be positive 4 for part of the graph. So we can draw in our first part of the line. If the y-intercept is 3 and the gradient is 4, that's fairly steep. Uh, well, we can start drawing it in, but actually I want to find also the x-intercept. So the x-intercept is when y is 0, so uh, this, this thing would equal 0. So this would be 4x plus 3 equal to 0, and then you get x equal to negative 3 on 4. So the x-intercept is negative 3 quarters, so if we draw our scale... For the x-axis, this is negative 1, negative 2. The x-intercept will be about somewhere here. Okay, then we can draw in the first part of our graph. And you'll probably usually be asked to mark the intercepts. So this was 0, 3. This was uh, negative 3 quarters, 0. And then pretty much just reflect the other part of the graph. You know, try to make it look like it's reflected in the axis of symmetry. And then you're done. Uh, now, they may give you a domain or not. Make sure to label the graph. And there you go. Now, what about these ones? What if you're asked to solve an equation with an absolute value? Well, it's similar to with the inequalities. So let's go down here a little bit. So we're looking to solve this. 4x plus 3 equal to negative 2x plus 1. Uh, now you could draw this line on your graph to get an idea of where the solutions might be. So we could do that quickly. This line has a y-intercept of positive 1 and a gradient of negative 2. So it would you know, look something like this. That's pretty rough, but there you go. So you should get two solutions and... Well, again, to get rid of these absolute value symbols, we can do this algebraically. To get rid of those, we would have a positive case. So 4x plus 3 equals negative 2x plus 1. And you also have a negative case where you get a negative value in there. So negative 4x plus 3 equals negative 2x plus 1. And then solve these for x. So solving this one, we would get 4x plus 2x is 6x. And then 1 take 3 is negative 2. Then divide by 6. This is x equal to negative a third. And then over here, uh, you could expand that negative out or divide the other side by a negative. And in this case, it's sort of easier than inequality because we don't have to worry about you know flipping the inequality around. We just solve it as we would normally, an equation. So, okay, I'll divide by a negative over here. This would be... Uh, 2x take 1, and then 2x equals negative 4, and then x equals negative 2. So usually when you solve an absolute value equation, you'll get two solutions because the graph looks like this. So if you have another straight line, it will usually cross that graph at two places, but sometimes you'll have the case where there are no solutions. Uh, now, usually you'll probably prove this graphically. So, for example, if we want to graph this straight line 3x plus 2, well, the y-intercept is at plus 2. You could also find the x-intercept. Remember, that's when that equals 0. You find the x-intercept is negative 2 thirds. And you see that uh, this line never cuts this graph because the gradient is also less. So, it will never... Firstly, it never cuts the graph down here anywhere. And also, it's never going to, you know, catch up or however you want to put that. It's never going to sort of magically come across here and cut the graph somewhere up here. 
because the gradient is less. So that's uh, one way you could prove the absolute value of 4x plus 3 equals 3x plus 2 has no solutions because their graphs never intercept. Okay, so there you go. That is a fairly important topic. I'd suggest going ahead and doing some revision on that. If you're not confident on this topic, as I said, it's come up in uh, four sets of previous A-level papers. So if you're preparing for an exam at some point in the future, you know, this would be a fairly important topic to revise. Okay, thanks for watching. Oh, the other thing is, uh, you know, if you have any questions or any other topics you want me to cover, leave them in the comments and let me know. And that's about it. So see you in the next one. Bye for now.